Hi guys, um, back out here at the RV. Had to bring a few more things out. Um, clean sheets, um, some dishes, you know, that, uh, you know, this is how it goes. This, this is like a normal routine as far as, you know, RV life when you're not full time. And that's really what this channel is about. I've said it many times, but, you know, you, you park your uh, RV and ours happens to be go back and forth from the house to storage. So when you, you know, take it from the house after cleaning it up after a trip, a lot of times you have items that are still in the house. Uh, this case, it's linens, uh, sheets, um, and then, you know, some dishes that needed to come back out. And again, I use a list for the bulk of that. Um, I don't know how others leave a comment below. Please like this video if you do like it. It helps the channel. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, it's, that's kind of the, the flow of it. You, you know, gear up for a trip and you have, you know, I work from lists and, you know, realizing everything we need from food to, you know, what linen, um, you know, that's as a side note, one really good thing to do. And I may have said this in other videos and not, can't really remember, but is to, you know, after you're, as soon as you're done with the trip. It's, I think it's really important to make a list of things you could do better next time or things that you know that the RV needs. Uh, you know, you can make a couple of different ones going to make it more efficient next time. And I say that and I, you know, we, I, you know, my wife and I especially, we're not perfect at it. We're trying to get there. Um, but we do, you know, kind of communicate different things that uh, we may or may not need for the RV um, you know, both currently and for future trips. And, you know, as far as I, I would say probably about a month out, um, sometimes even earlier than that, we'll start identifying what we need, um, start gathering it up. We have a s specific spot. I don't know how others kind of do it, but we've learned over the years where there's a specific spot in the house. And right now it happens to be by the front door. At one time, it was near the kitchen, and it still kind of is. It, it was in the kitchen near the fridge for the kitchen items. But the front door stuff is, um, you know, linens, uh, things like that. It reminds us before we head out, um, you know, all the time. But then it also reminds us, hey, we need to go to the RV and get the stuff in there. You know, it's no sense. I mean, you guess if you're super organized and you have a spot at your house for all RV items that, um, you know, you you kind of package up and take out each time. That's probably a great way to do it too. But we have a tendency to go back and forth to the RV a few times. And I have, I have a feeling there's a lot of people that kind of operate that way. Not really sure. Again, leave a comment, but um, yeah, so I brought a few items out. You know, I found out that these lights up here, which are LED actually run on the battery too. And I know I'm kind of pushing the envelope cause I do have the TV on, um, have an Amazon fire stick that I just fired up to see if it would come on with the battery again, back to the storage boondocking video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. Um, I'll try and maybe put a link to it in up here. Should pop in if, um, if I can figure out how to do that, I, I should be able to, but, um, yeah, you know, a lot of times, Hey, you know, I just come out here and, you know, I'll be able to work on something like I, I worked on that city water connection problem. I don't know you guys, that one, you know, luckily the person next door wasn't here at the time in the RV slots here, uh, spaces. And I was able to crawl underneath. I mean, I was, I was looking for the water pump, you know, I still haven't found it on here to be honest. I mean, the still on the stellar, um, uh, eclipse stellar, um, uh, 32 KSG. I think this one is I'm trying to pull that from memory. I'll put it on the screen. Um, I, I looked, you, you, when you turn it on, you know, back, back to this one, you turn it on, you can't, you can hear it, but you have a hard time identifying where it is. And I looked online, they're not going to, you know, it's the manual and whatnot is not going to, I don't think go into that much detail. You know, if you have maybe a technical manual on this rig now, I'm sure it would, but I don't know. I looked online, I guess you'd have to maybe um 
work for the company or be a mechanic at another company to have access to something like that. Again, I'm not a mechanic, so I just try and maintain this. Luckily, my brother-in-law came along and fixed it, but I mean, I was crawling all over this thing, um, and it was pretty hot that day, and I got, you know, I just, I just wore out. And luckily, my brother-in-law, right before the trip, was able to get it going. So it's stuff like that. You know, there's always little things to come out for. Um, I'm just now trying to think of some other things that may need to done. I know there's a cosmetic repair I want to try and do in the front. So that's how it kind of goes with uh, the, the in-between part. We're definitely kind of in-between part now. I don't see us taking this out for maybe uh, till after December possibly I, i'd really make, make a trip in november i really would for we talked about going out um during thanksgiving and doing something but not sure that's really going to happen it's we haven't talked about it i think we've got a little bit of the you know the traveling out of our system so I'm starting to focus on holidays and things like that but um i remember in years past going to a couple of different rv parks you know in the um the november time frame right around thanksgiving it was so it was so much fun it was cooler um especially out west here you know it was pretty dry it wasn't you know it wasn't raining i think we even kicked a turkey out there i think we actually had thanksgiving out there it was to me it was great i, I would love to do stuff like that you know more of it um but you know as time permits as um you know really people wanting to it to do it uh specifically my wife <laughs> but uh uh you know we do like having thanksgiving at home too and that that's why we really haven't gone full-time yet we we do like having a house to go back to and kind of regroup and uh, so these are some of the iterations you go through when you're not you know you're not full-timer you know you're i guess part-time rver <laughs> you could call it uh but with an eye on full time, you know, maybe one day or at least take an extended trip. So that'd be pretty nice to do, um, you know, up the coast, up uh, in some national forest areas, maybe up in Washington or Oregon, uh, that type of thing. Um, you know, once everything kind of, again, settles down, uh, you know, I hope and pray everybody's doing well out there, kind of getting through things. You know, I'm sure everything will get better eventually, kind of get back to a normal, normal we had. You know, back in January, you know, before everything kind of hit and with COVID in February. But anyways, uh, back to the RV lifestyle. Uh, yeah, there's there's more I need to do. I need now to make a list of items uh, that I know need work on in here. Um, again, there's a cosmetic repair up front. I got another cosmetic repair in here. Uh, I was taking out a slide and um, it took a little chip out of the... I had a ladder against the slide, and it took a little chip out of the um, piece of wood over here. But I think I can repair that somehow. I'll figure it out. Um, what I, you know, what I normally do, I get on YouTube. Um, YouTube, especially in the last, I think maybe two, three years, has gotten great. I'm sure you know that you're watching me on YouTube now. So uh, it's gotten great as far as you know the little little repairs. Um, you know, I did even find some information on that city water connection, but nothing specifically about city water going out that one and that specific issue we have but it's stuff like that you can find you know that uh makes the person who couldn't really do um you know any repairs before makes you able to do at least some repairs now uh with youtube and other um uh, you know google and other information online um no well, i shouldn't say any repairs before but um, you know, it'd be, you know, if it was something, especially something technical, it'd be a lot more difficult. Oh, I know one thing, you know, is that generator that's been ongoing with this thing. Um, you know, I did give it a full tank of gas and I might try and fire that up again while I'm here. Um, cause I have read somewhere that if you don't have a full tank of gas, that it won't start. Um, we did try and fire it up while I, after I put gas in it and it seemed like it was kind of leaking out of it. Um, leak. What I mean by that is leaking out of the generator, which is not a good thing. So I don't know if, you know, the carburetor now is completely toast and it's pushing gas out of it. 
Um, you know, now I think about it, it's probably unsafe to even try it, you know, again, until I get it looked at. So, but I do have a full tank of gas. This, this rig is set up for, again, going out to the desert, riding motorcycles for weeks at a time or days at a time. And so it has 30 gallon refuel gas tank to fill up the wheelers and whatnot. So it's pretty nice in that regard, but the generator all also runs on that. Um, you know, some of these, some people may have rigs like this. They're familiar, you know what I'm talking about, but I didn't know how much gas that thing would hold. And it actually holds, you know, it holds 30 gallons worth of gas, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, so we can always use it for emergency purposes. I think I need to remember though, that it's in there. So it doesn't go bad. You know, probably put it in the car at some point, just make sure we use it up um, and not, you know, just let it sit there. I know that's not good for especially ethanol gas. It does have some additive in it separator uh, from everything we were trying. But again, I need to make sure, make, set myself a reminder to, uh, you know, use that gas. But, um, oh, my brother-in-law on the trip, forgot to mention, guys, got these lids down. Um when we put the max air vents up top, it kind of blocked these lids, uh, these uh, this lid from going down, which were frail anyways. And he managed to get those down, which helped a lot with AC. Um, you know, this last trip it was pretty warm, so you know it able it was able to cool it off a little more. Um, and he also he also threw a switch on the AC. I'll put a picture of it here. Um, that helped um, push everything out through the vents. If you see these vents right here, they weren't really coming out. The AC wasn't coming out. I thought they were just for heater, for heater. I'll tell you what, guys, there's so much with these RVs. I, I learn stuff all the time. And that's, to me, it's the interesting part because it's a nice, well, it's more than a hobby, really. I mean, get out and use it. And But, yeah, you could say a hobby that, uh, you know, be able to learn about these things. So, yeah, evidently, there's this little switch right on the right about there on the ac unit that you push over and that forces air out these <laughs> which i always thought was just for heater and it quieted it down quite a bit so if anybody has a setup like that just know that you can push the little you'll see a little lever there again i'll put a picture of it and you can switch it back it's if you switch it back it's supposed to cool it down faster but it's louder and push yeah it that's down. it on the uh air conditioning which you know i again i had no idea about some some of this stuff he's actually gotten pretty good with rvs he's lived out uh he's full-time in um well he used it more than full-time you know i guess it is uh he you know was working somewhere and he needed to just basically live in there you know almost permanently uh, he did have another house he went went to on the weekends but and i've done that in here uh for about i think it was close to six months uh, which you do, I mean, if you're in these things, you know, all the time, and if you're around other RVers and campers and whatnot, you know, everybody kind of shares. The RV, RV community is great. I mean, they're great about sharing information, helping each other out. I mean, uh, you know, I really, I've never seen a, a better community in that regard. They really do pull together, and uh, it's still great. They help each other out, you know. Um, you know, I've learned from, you know, again, a lot from, you know, watching YouTube, but I've learned a lot from just talking to people too. And, um, you know, they, they're willing to share information. Um, and you know, if you, I mean, if you have your hood up in an RV park, I almost guarantee someone's going to come over and ask if you need any, some type of help. It's that, it's that type of community, you know, it's, um, for the most part, people are pretty friendly, you know, they wave and it's great. You know, it's, it's refreshing to see. And I hope it really never changes. You know, I hope it stays that this way for a long, long time. And it just, it makes RVing that much better. You know, there, you're going to have your instances too. You know, it's, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's still pretty good. It is for the most part. If you're, if you're brand new and you're thinking about getting into RVing, you know, um, I'd say it's worth it. You know, if you can afford it, um, and now that's that's the other side of it. It's, it can get pricey. It definitely good. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not, but it can definitely get pricey. It can um, it definitely can be time consuming, uh, especially at first when you're trying to figure everything out. 
But once you kind of get over those hurdles, there's channels like this and others. I'll put some on the screen that are just great help, um, you know, it, in getting you started. Or maybe you're down the road and you've been doing this for years. Um, you know, it, either way, it's, you know, there's still a lot to learn. Um, you can still learn from each other. There's always new um, items being added to to these, you know, RVs. There's, you know, to travel trailers, fifth wheels, it doesn't matter. Uh, you probably even class A's, they probably use, I, I've seen a fair amount of videos now where they show these new units, which I don't really recommend watching too much because this probably make you want to get a new one. <laughs> but they have new, um, you know, I think one of them had, what did it have? It had a new type of air conditioning. I forget exactly what it was. It was um, some type of new, um, uh, like, window covering type thing, like uh, blinds, I think it was. I can't exactly remember, but it just dawned on me how the industry is con constantly evolving, you know, with new, new stuff, which is great. I, I think it's probably evolving now more than when we had an RV years ago. Um, it's definitely, I think there's a lot of smart people out there that are inventing, um, you know, uh, new, new technologies for the RV industry, uh, new improvements, you know, as the different models come out and they, I think the good news is they're actually listening to the consumer, you know, they're actually, um, uh, is it Jayco put a comment below? I think they put pretty decent tires on now. Um, you know, for a long time, I don't think they did. I think, I think a lot of places just put the cheapest, uh, China bomb tires on, <laughs> on there. And I learned, I learned the hard way. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys this story, but we were coming back from across the desert, uh, the Mojave desert, like though, this is, I'd say probably 15 years ago now. Um, very, very hot day. And I had... I had brand new tires on and I had basically, I think I had two tires. No, I had one tire blow and it, I had one tire blow. We, well, we had two different vehicles. Let me back up. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two different vehicles. One was toner. We had a boat at the time. We don't anymore. We had a boat at the time and a tra travel trailer. I think it was a Fleetwood. We had a tire blow on the tra boat trailer. And so had to deal with all that. And then we were going down the road and we had a tire blow on the, tra on the trailer, which were brand new. So, and I think what happened was the shop, I won't mention it. I should, but <laughs> um, they essentially, I think when they inflated the tires, whenever you get your tires done, you might want to take a second peek at them or have the shop do it and make sure they're not overinflated. Because I think that's what happened. They they didn't, you know, typically they just kind of, they put them on the um, machine to blow them up. And I think it takes a lot of inflation pressure to do that. And a lot of times they don't set it back to where it needs to be. They may rush. I'm, I'm, I don't really know. You know, again, leave a comment if you might know. And I think it left it overinflated and it blew. And it took out part of the... Um, like the fender, you know, around the, the tire. And it was, it was, it was pretty bad. It was like, man, you know, and the, to have new tires, you think you're good to go. Well, even at that, so lessons learned guys, keep an air eye on, uh, I mentioned this before, but keep an eye on your air, on your tires and the, the heat of them. Um, you know, I got one of those little laser uh, thermometer type things, you know, that, when I think of it, I'll get out and just making sure they're all running at a consistent heat, you know, because it'll fluctuate depending on how hot it is, how hot the road is and whatnot. But you'll kind of get a gauge where they're supposed to be. I can't remember where ours run at. I want to say 118. I could be wrong about that. Um, you know, again, depending on the heat of the road and whatnot. So, yeah, keep an eye on that and keep an eye on the tire, the tire pressure. You know, there's I think it's TPMS unit four. You can get four trailers, you know, that you monitor her front of your truck. And I think it might be Bluetooth. Um, I'll put a picture of it up here. I don't have one. I'd like to have one. I know they're kind of pricey. But that's another way 
to keep an eye on your pressure because if the pressure's too high or too low, it's not a good thing. You know, it, it'll end up overheating the tire, essentially. And once it overheats, then it's probably going to, you're going to have an issue for sure. So tires are super important on these things, guys. I know I've mentioned it before. I can keep going on and on about that one. But anyhow, um, so it's things like that. You know, tires have gotten better. Um, shoot, this one's got an awesome stereo system. Uh, again, my brother-in-law was able to get the kicker going. It's got a kicker base back there. Um, so it's pretty decent. You know, our last one, I think, barely had any type of speaker. It was, it was not that great. It did have something I was thankful for. Um, you know, just, just improvements across the board, which is, it's really nice to see and, and to keep up on too, you know, and it's maybe it's something, um, that you yourself want to, um, you know, upgrade on your unit and, you know, you've identified that, uh, maybe this particular item will, will help you, you know, do something more efficiently. Um, you know, like I know there's, uh, some of the uh, lifts, the trailer tongue jacks have changed. So I've been kind of looking at those, you know, uh, I'd like to get a locking one, you know, cause I know, you know, it's kind of feels a little bit vulnerable. I, I have the bulk of everything else locked, but you know, the, as far as the up and down on the front, those front gauges, you know, they're not locked. So I think, and I know there's locking ones, ones that are, not really sure even how those things last you know this this one's actually making a little funny noise so i'm not sure you know um i need to actually look how to lube it you know and again if you guys have have lubed your tongue jack put it down below um i'm sure it's just a youtube search away i probably might do that today now that i'm thinking about it but uh, it's things like that that are constantly um again keep kind of the safety first the security i throw lump security in there uh, as far as locking things up, even I lock up the propane bottles, the whole deal, battery. Um, actually, that was all done before I even got it because the person I got it from was a family member, but he got a propane bottle. I think he got both of them stolen um, where he lived. And so it only takes one time. And see, he just, he has, he put this, you know, we're obviously still using it so long lock it's a super long lock i'll put a picture of it um it just goes through and goes through the trailer frame and that was that and locked them up so it's you know things like that you want to first and foremost and then get to your secondary items of aesthetic things like i was talking about earlier you know uh, you want to keep that going too just to keep it well maintained and looking good you know cleanliness is another thing we do try and clean it each after each time we go out, um, but there's been times we've rushed it, you know. Um, I just thought of another thing that needs to get done is the roof. Um, I don't think it's ever been officially treated, and this rig's a little over three years, uh, so it's probably due. Um, I've, I've done it myself, but it's never been professionally done, so uh, I'm thinking about getting it in for that, um, you know. I don't know if it's every two years, how often you're supposed to do them, but I know they do have to be maintained. So there's, there's a fair amount guys. It's not, you know, it's like a, it is a house on wheels. Um, but there's, it's different than a regular stick house as far as, you know, stick house you have to maintain too. There's certain things you just got to keep doing. Uh, these things are the same thing. You have to either maintain them or, you know, what happens then? I don't even want to go there, but, uh, that's pretty much it guys um you know i just wanted to get back with you just give you a little update on how everything's going um the truck's doing good um it does i think it's got a couple of recalls guys let me know if you've done any recalls on your uh you know ram hd 2500 cummins diesel um you know let, let me know if i think it's i think i saw it's got a recall on the uh something about the backup camera the computer needs to be updated because it's too slow and something about the brakes. So pretty important stuff. I'm going to double check that and I'll, I'll put it on the screen if it's true. Um, I'd probably be trying to get that done in the next few weeks just to keep it going. Especially if we're not traveling, might as well 
start knocking out some of those. Um, probably get another oil change for it too. Just went over 20,000 miles on it. So going strong and I'm really happy with it. Um, it's towed great. Um, the only thing I would probably add to it is maybe some airbags, which there's, you know, I know there's controversy with different stuff, but I'd like to get that back end up a little bit more, especially towing this heavy weight here. Um, but uh, those shouldn't be too expensive. I've had them done before when we had the Tundra. Um, Camping World, I think is where we did it. And, you know, they do them all the time. So, you know, that that's what I've heard. If, you know, you go to the places that uh, it's kind of like going to a steak restaurant and ordering, um, I don't know, fish. You know, something, you know, they do. The analogy is go somewhere where they they do something all the time like like uh hitches here's another al analogy you know if you go to u-haul they they uh if you just need like a regular trailer hitch or whatever um they put they put those things on all the time and they're really good at it well it's the same thing with um kind of the airbag thing and, and different things around that area they they i mean i don't think I, mean, I think about it camping world probably is pretty good at hitches too so go to the place, you know, where they're experts at what they do, um, kind of in their lane, if you will. That's what I've learned. If anybody gets anything out of that, uh, that'd be great. But um, anyhow, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to it's getting our kind of long video, but uh, leave a comment below. Please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for all the subscribers we do have. Uh, you guys, you know, let me know when you see in these videos, you know, I'll keep them going. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great day. Hey guys, just wanted to do this quick video on the NoCo Genius Boost. Um, picked this up not too long ago. Um, fortunately, haven't had to use it yet, but it's ready if needed. Um, this kind of replaces the old jumper cables that most of us uh, 50 plusers uh, used for years in the last couple of years these these came about um, and they're really great they save a lot of space um, they're probably safer overall and uh, super convenient uh, because it's more than just uh, a booster it's got a light on it and USB charger so it's kind of a safety device too in that regard you could something you could throw in a, a bug out bag uh, that type of thing um, anyhow so this is the noco genius boost gb40 uh, for 12 volt they may make one for different types of batteries but basically turn it on here um, tells you how much charge you have obviously if it's low you would hook up the usb over here standard usb for the car uh, and charge it uh, that's actually there's two of them one's one's to charge and one's to to get charged there um, actually pretty simple to use um, you just connect your clamps here to this side Cl clamps right in on that side um, and once you, provided you don't have a yellow error here. Now, if you hook, the old days, you hook the clamps up, it was a bad thing backwards. I mean, if you hook them up, you know, red to black or something, uh, bad things happen. But this, if you do that, no worries. It'll give you an error right here and just let you know, hey, your, um, your batteries are reversed, essentially. So... Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty handy, it's pretty safe. Um, you know, most people can obviously handle operating something like that, even if maybe you've never jump started. It comes with pretty clear instructions as well. Uh, matter of fact, I'll link up the video down in this description. Uh, now, you can do a manual override on these, um, and that's right here. And that, that's where you would actually, um, if there's, there's safe, certain safety mechanisms that, uh, you know, this boost has built in that says, you know, if things aren't 
looking quite right, but if you, in your mind you know they're all hooked up right, and for whatever reason, you know, the boost here, its internal safety mechanisms aren't allowing for essentially you to try and give it a jump start, uh, you can hit that manual override, and that's right there, and that'll allow you to essentially set off the safety, the internal safety mechanisms of the boost, and allow you to go ahead and try and start the car. Now, is that recommended? Probably not, but it's a nice feature that they include. No, nice to know it's there. Um, hopefully, you'll never need it. Um, again, it's got a light on it, so that's pretty bright. I mean, shoot, look at that. Just see there. LED, nice LED light. Um, and again, you can charge your cell phone off it. So it's like a you know, a lot of people they'll carry around extra batteries just for just in case for their phones, you know, and maybe in the car or whatever you got going on. But you know, with obviously keep this in the car, but this could also serve, you know, so you say you lost total power and you had to uh, you know, have something at least charge your phone to for emergency type situation. So again, it's the NoCo Genius Boost. Um, fortunate enough not to have to use it yet. <laughs> uh, knock on wood. Um, but it's there if needed. And again, it takes kind of the place of the old jumper cables that uh, many many of us used for many years, which you needed another car <laughs> around too to. To get the jump and it knocks that out too which was always a big you know a biggie if you there's not always in a second car around so this is kind of like your second car and your boost and your cables all wrapped into one so highly recommend it i'll look at link it up down below um we'll try and keep these going with some of the other the gear that purchased uh you know just to for safety reasons and um uh, recovery reasons towing reasons, things of that nature. So everybody have a great day.